Well, welcome to the Scalar Lab, section 9-7. We have three pages here. You can see page number one, page number two, page number three. Well, uh, let's start on the first one here. We can see the grid here. I've given triangle RST. We're going to read the coordinates from, well, from the graph. I put it in the first quadrant to make it easy. Look at R. That looks like 2, 4. If I just double click on this, I can put in a 2. There's my 4. And I look at S, and that's clearly 6, 0. So we'll put in a 6, double click there, and a 0. How about T? Can you see that? That looks like 8, 2. So we'll put it in here, 8, and we'll put in a 2. Now, um, right now I'm going to change the look of this because I don't like this. I'm going to hide the grid. It looks a little cleaner. I don't need that for reading anymore. And the object of a scalar, we're going to multiply each of, well, each of these numbers by three halves or one and a half. Now, some of you have shown me that you're a little weak in your fractions. You know, young people don't use them anymore. Just a reminder, this is how it works. Remember, three halves of four, for example. That's three halves times four. So divide out the common factor so it becomes three times two, which is six. Well, now that you know that, what's three halves of two? Well, that's going to be three. Three halves of four, we just did that. That's six. How about three halves of six? Well, that's, that's going to be 9. 3 halves of 0 is 0. 3 halves of 8 is 12. 3 halves of 2 is 3. Looks good so far. Now, we could plot these points, but no, no, no. I made my class make an animation. So we're going to animate this. I want you to plot our prime. We're going to go to the graph. We're going to plot points. And there it goes. 3, tab, 6 plot point. So that's going to be, that is the location of our prime after the translation. We're going to draw a path, draw a segment from R connecting to that plotted point. That's going to be the, the well, that's, that's going to be the root of your translation. You need to put a point on there. You can construct a point on segment like that, or you could have just taken one of these and snapped it on there. Either way. I've got a point that moves along this path. I'm going to name it R prime. There it goes. Why? I didn't say why. I want R prime. R prime looks like that. And I'll make the font 36 so it matches. And I'll be able to see that. Oh, that's going to look good. Now, at this point, I can hide the root. This is the path I've made for it. I'm going to hide this. See, so R prime slides from 2, 4 up there to 3, 6. Now, let's go to my the special tools I made for you over here in the custom tools. I want you to take a ray from the origin passing through R and make a ray from the origin passing through T. These dilations are about the origin. They only work this way if they are about the origin. And let's see what I've got here. So um, I want to make the sides of my new image triangle. Select R prime, select RT, construct parallel line. There you go. This point where it intersects your dashed ray here, that's going to be, as you would have guessed, that's going to be T prime. Not Z prime, T prime. T prime, that's excellent. And now we're going to, I'll uh, just do a little test here. So we move like this, looks good. I'm going to click now, well, I guess I'm going to draw a segment, R prime, T prime. If you're on version five, your construction line just went dashed. But right here, I'm going to select the original line and I'm going to hide it, All right? Now, select T prime and ST, construct parallel line. There you go. And of course, the intersection of that parallel line and the x-axis will be S prime. So let's put it in there. S prime. 
and you're just about there. I'm going to draw R prime, S prime, S prime, T prime, and I'm going to hide my construction mark. And I can, you could check this, and if I look here, S prime certainly is at nine zero, T prime is at, well, looks like 12, two to me, and we're going to build an animation. Select R prime only. Edit, action button. Animation, we're going to go forward once only, and well, you can go other, or you can just go fast. We'll be good, and hit OK. Right now, an animation button appeared off the screen, so I moved it over for you, and there you go. Press that button, and you can actually see this figure move. And make a note to yourself, because this dilation about the origin is known as an enlargement. Oh, and ENT. There you go. Make a note of that. So your teacher will want to know. All right, that's great. You're done with page one. Let's go to two, and we'll speed it up. Page two. We're going to plot these points. We're given W, G, and Z there, so we'll go to graph, plot the points. Oh, negative 9, and just hit the tab, 3, plot. You see it appear, 12, tab 9, plot, first quadrant, 6, tab negative 3, and, and let's see, we're down there. I'm going to have to move the scale down there in the fourth quadrant. Maybe I'll just move this. There we go. And we'll say that's W is, is over here. And I'll make sure you change that to blue. We'll stick with our notation that the pre-image is going to be in blue. And over here, this is going to be my G. And finally down here, what do we got there? That's going to be my Z. And I want you to connect them. that and that is your original triangle that's your pre-image I can make all the calculations just like we did before notice conveniently all the numbers are multiples of three and I just want you to have integral values for your coordinates so two-thirds of negative nine well that's easy negative six and two-thirds of three is two two-thirds of twelve so we just, didn't we just do this? Eight, a little in reverse. Um, how about two thirds of nine? Well, that will be six. And let's see here, two thirds, uh, two thirds of six. And what, what did we just, what did we say that was? That's going to be four. And two thirds of negative three will be negative two. All right, well, to do this an easy way, I'm just going to double click about the origin. Let's not animate this one. We're just, we've already done that once. We got the idea. And I'm just going to select the entire figure this time, just like this, the whole figure. And we'll go to the transform menu. We're going to dilate. Uh, one half is a default, but we're going to select two thirds. And there we go. While it's there, Let's, uh, while it's still highlighted, let's go to display and color it red as we like with our image. And it will be already labeled correctly. W prime, this will come up G prime, and Z prime over here. If you'd like, you could put draw your rays and you'll notice when you draw rays, each of the points and its corresponding image are collinear with the origin. You'd expect that. So that is, well, I think, I think we're done on this page. Let me see. Yeah, I think we're done. If you want to confirm your points, you can, uh, you can show the grid and you can make sure, oh yeah, that's eight, six, and you can see and maybe count a little bit better. Personally, I like that um, 
I like the grid off. And now for your notes on there, make a note that this is a reduction. Nicely done. Okay, one more page. Now, this one is an interesting, uh, interesting construction. We are going to simulate, we're going to use a computer to simulate a manual construction. Well, so, which we're then going to enjoy with a computer. This is funny. Um, remember, the objective here, I mean, I could just dilate this whole thing with a few clicks, but I want you to see if, I want you to emulate using a uh, straight edge and ruler. Take your ray tool, just like you would if this were on paper. Connect P to each of the vertices. Now you're going to extend that ray at least twice as far as the distance from P to the given point on the pre-image because you're going to make a dilation of 2 to 1 here. Then we're going to do it manually. Well, simulated manual. And this is how you would do it. You'd then pick up your compass and you'd put the needle on each of the points. For example, the L. And you'd swing an arc through this P and you'd find the point up here where it intersects. Well, you'd probably need to move that compass now over to N or each of them in turn. You're going to swing that arc and swing it like this. You would do this to each of the four points and what you're doing is you're finding the points that are you know, equidistant um, say from N to in this case P back here to N prime or another way of saying it you're doubling the distance N prime will be twice the distance from P as N is. Well you don't have these little compasses built into your program so I'm going to make them go away and you can't use those arcs either they're pretty, but you can't use them. So I'm going to, um, let's see, how do, we, how do we erase those? We're going to erase the traces there. Control B, display, erase, Control B. So they're gone. Instead, you're going to use this neat little tool I made for you, a compass swing. You're going to put the needle on the L. You're going to swing an arc through P. That compass will also swing through this point. And I can swing it through that point right there. And I'm going to call that point L prime. Well, we're going to do this again. From Y, swing it through point P. And you can see where this arc swings through my ray. That's going to, that would be Y prime. So mark it Y prime. Then, well, a couple more from N. Swing your compass through point P again. And we're going to label that point. That will, of course, be N prime. And one more from X through P. And this is X prime. And it looks like we're done, but we're not. Y, N prime, X prime, back to L prime. And you can see with the construction marks, just like you would have on your paper, you've got the construction marks and you've got your pre-image and your image. But the other thing I want you to do before you turn it in, I want you to manipulate this. This is what you can't do with your paper construction can't move your focus around. You can't move your center of your dilation. I want you to move it around. Watch what happens to the image. Move it this way. I can move P as on the outside. I can move P inside the figure, inside the pre-image, or I can place P on the image. Place it on any of the vertices and look at the resulting image. So get used to what a dilation, again, this is a two to one dilation. In this case, from the outside, from the inside, or from on. 
the figure. All right, well done. You, I enjoyed this one too, so um, make sure your name is on it and put it in the Dropbox. Thank you very much.